Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear, Hellas. Have you loud and clear as well. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, my name is Jessica Santiago, and I am a teacher at Oak Ridge Elementary School of Leadership, Environmental, and Health Sciences in Egan, Minnesota. Right now, our third grade students are working hard during their astronomy unit of study, learning about the solar system, and they have some questions for the astronauts on the International Space Station. Here is their first question. Hello, my name is Sophia. I am nine years old and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary. My question is, how have things changed in the space station since your last visit? Great stations, a great question, Sophia. On the space station, it's changed a little bit because we've actually added a new airlock called the NanoRax airlock. Um, and uh, Otherwise, it's really largely stayed the same. Just a moment, I'm going to answer the uh, video call. Hello, my name is Adrian. I am eight years old, and my question is, what do you guys do for fun on the International Space Station? Fantastic question. Uh, we definitely like to have fun. Um, we like to take pictures a lot. It's, the view up here is absolutely incredible. I like to read a book before I go to bed to help myself relax be, and to be able to sleep well. About once a week, we get together and watch a movie. Uh, and we, just like you all in school do, sometimes we just crack jokes and make each other laugh so hard we cry. And we have a lot of fun together. Hi, my name is Matthew. I'm 11 years old, and my question is, how do you know when to sleep when you see 16 sunsets and 16 sunrises? Uh, we have, that's a great question, because if basically the length of daylight is 90, is around 45 minutes, then, you know, that's too quick to go back to bed in 45 minutes. So we choose the time of day. We use uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And we just decide that we're going to go to bed just like a, on a 24-hour schedule, just like you all do. We just have to pick one place on the planet, and we're going to live by their schedule. Great question. Hi, I'm Bella, and I'm nine years old. My question is, what's your favorite part about living in space? My favorite part about living in space is the freedom of mobility. I can... I can move in any direction. In fact, I definitely can't do this on the ground. But I'm going to try it for you right now. Let's see if I can do it. So there's all kinds of things, fun things you can do in space that you can't do on the ground. Great question. Thanks. Hi, my name is Megan. I'm nine years old. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, how is it different from flying to the International Space Station versus going back to, to the Earth from the International Space Station? Um, the difference for me was, so when we launch to the space station, we have a lot of force from the rocket pushing us up to get there. And then we spend a lot of time in orbit while we're waiting to catch up to the space station. Uh, on the way back, 
it's not as much force to slow yourself down from a rocket. We just need to slow enough down just enough so that we start interacting with the atmosphere, and the atmosphere slows us down the rest of the way. And then the scary part about coming back that we don't have on the way up is on the way back to help protect us, we actually use a parachute to finish slowing us down enough so we can land safely on the ground, at least with the Russian spacecraft that I used to both launch and return to the Earth last time, and will again this time. Thanks. Hi, my name is Suhi. I am nine years old and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary. My question is, how do you recycle in space? How do you recycle in space? Well, uh, this might be kind of, let's see how to say this politely. Um, the major thing that we recycle is water. And I want to, you to imagine all the way you bring water in and, and get water out of your body. Well, we have a great system out on board the space station, and we don't have to wait for years upon years for the, the water that you use to, to filter through a system of clouds and rain and lakes and oceans and then getting into aquifers and then coming back to you to be able to drink. We actually have machinery that does that for us, so we're able to make that recycle process much more quickly on the space station than on the Earth. Great question. Hi, my name is Dylan. I'm not eight years old, and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary. My question is, how do you grow plants in space? We grow plants in space in a special uh, science facility um, where we have lights, grow lights, that help the plants feel like they're getting sunshine. And we also have syringes we use to put water into what I would call envelopes of soil, which have the nutrients that allow the plants to grow. So we have to carefully take care of them, but the big difference for me when, I, when we were watering plants is you can't just pour water out of a, a water can onto the plants. You have to inject it with some pressure from a syringe to get into an enclosed space so the water doesn't float all over the place. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lily. I am nine years old and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, what did you have to do to become an astronaut? Wow, I, that's a really good question. I think there's thousands of people that could do this job just as well or better than me even that never got the opportunity. So uh, I really feel like I was very fortunate what you need to do to be an astronaut is you've got to go to school long enough that you get a college education, including a master's degree these days. Um, you've got to have work experience, and you've got to really find something you love doing and do really well at it because we, NASA typically hires people to be astronauts who are very successful in whatever they were doing before they arrived. And another fantastic question. Hello, my name is Debbie. I am eight years old and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, how long does it take to get up to the International Space Station? It de that question, how long does it take to get to the International Space Station, depends on the spacecraft you're using. For me, I think my flight was the second flight that only took three hours to get, uh, to get up to the space station. We've had spacecraft that take 24 hours. And uh, we're constantly learning, so again, it varies. It depends on the situation. If we had a problem with our three-hour trip, we would have been able to, 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 to fall back to a different mode and take a longer period of time to get to the space station. Hello, my name is Asiana Sir, and I'm nine years old. My question is, what advice do you have for kids who hope to be astronauts someday? Wow, what a great question. I, have, I definitely have advice. You should do your best at everything you do, even if, and, and take opportunities that are really hard, do things that are challenging, that, that you might even fail at. But always try your best, and if you fail at something, figure out a way to do it again, and if you still want to do it, try it again with something changed. Now, I said always try to be your best, but it's even more important that you help the other people around you be their best as well. It's more important that you, you're a team player than that you're always the best of the group. Great question. Thank you. Hello. 
My name is Quentin. I am nine years old, and I go to Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, can kids go to space? I think the question was, can kids go to space? Right now, so there's nothing physiological that would prevent a kid from going to space. But right now, every program we have doesn't involve kids going to space because we need them to have so much education before we take them up there. Um, so I think the future will probably have some kids going to space. We'll see. Hi, my name's Aiden. I am nine years old. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, what do the stars look like from space? Aiden, I would say this, the stars look very much like they look from a desert at night um, without a full moon on the Earth. But we have even l we have no atmosphere between us and the stars. Very, very trace, trace elements of the atmosphere between us and the stars. So it's a little bit clearer. The challenge for us is we have very small windows and they don't necessarily look up and away from the Earth like the windows that, or the sky does for you all. So our field of view is much smaller. But it is gorgeous when you get to look out the window at the stars and you have every, all the lights turned off inside the space station. Hello, my name is Megan. I am nine years old. I, go, I am from Oakridge Elementary School. My question is, what inspired you to become an astronaut? Uh, Megan, what inspired me to be an astronaut? Um, I think the combination of both physical challenges and mental challenges was one of the things. I know that is one of the things. The other thing is it's the opportunity to serve not just my country, but all of humanity because of the research we're doing on the space station. Um, it helps people out today and potentially helps people in the future as we learn to explore further and further away from the Earth. The exploration is a big part. Hi, my name is Faiza. I'm nine years old. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, what kind of scientific research are you doing on the International Space Station? There are hundreds of experience, uh, experiments that will take place while I'm on the space station. And more than 200, I believe, took place while I was on the space station last time. A couple highlights. Just to my left here, there is a facility called the Life Sciences Glove Box. I've spent about half of half the day every day working in that glove box on an uh, experiment called celestial immunity. That experiment uses a solution of cells donated by young people and elderly people, and then we treat those we treat those solutions with different uh, uh, different treatments, and we take samples daily to see how the solution changes to help us better understand how the human immune system adapts both to the treatments and to the microgravity environment that we're in right now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Casey. I am nine years old and go to Oak Ridge Elementary. My question is, after you lift off into the space station, will you get weaker each year in space? Station. This is Houston ACR. The question was, after you lift off into the space station, will you get weaker each year in space? Thank you very much. Um, yes. If we didn't exercise so much. So because our human beings are amazing at adapting, we will go ahead and uh, if you exercise a lot, you'll get stronger. If you study a lot, you'll get smarter. If you come to the space station and you don't even have to use your bones to and muscles to stand up, those muscles would get weaker. So fortunately for us, we have a, an exercise bicycle. We have a, um, a treadmill up here with bungee cords to hold us down onto it, and a vacuum uh, vacuum s cylinders that we can use to provide resistance to simulate lifting weights. And we can do all those things to help keep us strong. So for me, I hope to not get any weaker maybe even get stronger and uh, more fit while I'm on the space station. Hello, my name is Asma. I'm eight years old. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, how can you be in space? We can breathe in space because the, the gases that we need to breathe on the Earth have been transported up to the space station or recycled on the space station. And we, I live in a compartment 
that is full of the right gases to breathe. Otherwise, uh, we would not be able to breathe. Now, for us, we know that if we lose this atmosphere inside the space station, we're in trouble. And we, we practice reacting to that emergency to make sure that doesn't happen. On the, on the Earth, it's, it's a little more difficult to recognize how precious that atmosphere is because it seems so massive. But from here, it looks very, very thin. One of my big takeaways from being in space is I feel much more protective of the atmosphere that we need to breathe on the Earth than I used to before I came to space. Hi, my name is Matthew. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, why can't astronauts go to Mars yet? Great question. There's a lot of technical challenges. Um, we've first of all got to have a spacecraft that can take us that far away. It costs a lot of money to build. We just got a budget for it. We've got, we're working on that right now. Of course, we're going to do that after we go back to the moon. Um, I also think we need to make sure we understand how to keep people healthy because for that really long trip to get to Mars, when you get there, there's not going to be people there to take care of you. So you need to be healthy enough to take care of yourself. For me, when I come back from the space station, I'll have a whole team of doctors taking care of me, making sure I'm okay, even carrying me to the next spot. But astronauts have got to be able to take care of themselves when they get to Mars, and part of our mission up here is to make sure we understand how to do that. Hi, my name is Daya. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, how do you communicate with your families while you are gone for six months at a time? We use, I use, the internet protocol phone to call my wife about every day. And fortunately, NASA has provided the capability to my wife and children to do a conference um, with a video once a week. And also with other family members, I was able to talk to my uh, siblings on their birthdays uh, also because NASA helped us out with some software. But it's all, right now, we're able to use satellites and the internet to communicate with family members. Hi, my name is Samantha. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, what is your favorite food in space? Great question. My favorite food in space tends to be stuff that's cold. We don't get that many cold things. And gosh, what? We have shrimp cocktail, believe it or not. That's pretty good, and it's cold. I also really like some cold cereals, like granola with uh, almond milk that we rehydrate by adding water to it, and it's really refreshing when it's nice and cold in our little refrigerator. Thanks. Hi, my name is Yannette. I'm nine years old. I'm from Oak Ridge Elementary School. My question is, how do you feel when you're on a spacewalk? How do I feel when I'm on a spacewalk? I would say a combination of excitement and fear. Um, I tend to be very focused on my job because I don't want to, people to put a lot of effort into making sure the equipment out there is up there and training me to, make, to help fix it. So I want to be successful. And the view is amazing. Um, but yeah, there's, it's also, you, you don't, you don't want to spend too much time thinking about the fact that that's the Earth 240 miles below you sometimes. Otherwise, you can get a little nervous. You don't want to mess up anything. But it's really, I'm looking forward to getting the opportunity to do another spacewalk. Hello, my name is Dr. Kindem. As the principal of Oak Ridge Elementary, I want to share a special thank you to the astronauts today who answered our scholars' questions and to NASA for making this amazing opportunity possible. You help bring all of our research to life. Thank you. Thank you very much as well. Thank you, all of you, for the wonderful questions. Really appreciate the opportunity to answer and share, share this fantastic experience with all of you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>